Okay. So I think of this kind of like the elephants saving the baby when the lion comes. That you've got uh, the elephants are just hanging around and the baby's there and the lion is going to go after the baby because he's the littlest and the easiest prey. So <coughs> the elephants put the baby in the middle and they all form a circle around the baby with their elephant tails into the baby and they're standing there like this with their tusks out for the lion. Well, they're not wiggling, right? They're just there intimidating the lion. And he's like, and they're like, yeah, you got to get through this if you want to mess with the baby. You understand what I'm saying, right? That's kind of what these do. Okay, this is the baby in here. Now, on the other side, we've got chloride ions, and the opposite same thing happens. Now, the water comes in here, but this time we send the partial positive charge of the hydrogen in to sort of pull the chloride ion out, and then we surround the chloride ion or solvate it again with the hydrogen end in. Okay, so it's quite active interaction. Now, when you have nonpolar solids, it's not quite that exciting. You have the nonpolar solids, you're dumping them in a nonpolar solvent, the molecules are moving and they just kind of slither off and slide in and start mixing because of molecular motion. So regardless of whether it is a polar solution or a nonpolar solution, you're going to have an energy change. And that energy change can be measured with um, studying the change of solution or the enthalpy of solution. You remember from Chem 111 that when we talk about delta H, <coughs> We're talking about enthalpies, and we said they take place at constant pressure, so there's a heat term only. There's no work involved. Remember that? So the enthalpy change for the solution can be thought of as the difference between the enthalpy of solution minus the enthalpy of the components. And we can figure this out a couple of different ways. We can think of this in steps. It takes energy to spread the molecules apart. The energy that's required to break the molecules or the ions in a crystal lattice, because you remember from the very end of Chem 111 that most solid materials crystallize in some kind of crystal lattice. Sharps class, did you talk about crystal lattices at all? And about placement of things in a crystal lattice and ownership of atoms in a particular cell? Yeah, I'm guessing no, no. You don't remember that, Todd? Oh, okay, I thought you said you had sharp. Yeah, okay, so, well, do you remember that from who you did have? Oh, it's been more than three weeks. Yeah, okay. All right, so we talk about that, and that energy um, is the lattice energy. Now, by definition, the lattice energy is the energy released when you form a lattice. It can also be the energy required when you break the lattice apart. In this case, we're breaking the lattice apart, so the enthalpy is positive. Now, the tricky part is if you look this up in a chart, you're going to see it listed as a negative number. It's going to say the lattice energy is negative so many kilojoules per mole. But it's your job to change the sign to positive because this discussion, we are breaking apart the lattice. So it takes energy to spread that apart. Then, that's the first step. Energy is released when the solution forms. This time it's negative because we're looking at randomness and chaos increasing in the solvation energy, so energy is released. So the enthalpy of solution is equal to the lattice energy plus the solvation energy. It, uh, lattice energy is a positive number, and the solvation energy is a negative number. Check your copies carefully. Make sure this says plus and not minus. There was a typo in this previously, and I fixed it, but if you got an old packet in the bookstore, it might still have the typo in it. So, depending on the magnitude of the lattice energy and the solvation energy, 
the solution, enthalpy of solution, can be either positive or negative. If it's positive, how does it feel when you stick your hand in there? If the enthalpy of solution is positive, how does it feel when you stick your hand in there? Cold. How does it feel if the enthalpy of solution is negative and you stick your hand in there? Warm, because energy is being released when you have a negative enthalpy. So, let's look at this. What's the enthalpy of hydration of potassium iodide? Well, you have to go look up some information in the book, and I've already done that. We know that the enthalpy of solution or hydration is equal to the lattice energy plus the energy of solvation. So we look up in the book and we see that the lattice energy listed in the book is equal to negative 632 kilojoules per mole. That's how it's listed in the chart in the book because it's defined as the energy released when we form the lattice. But we are going to break the lattice, so we have to change that sign. Then we look up the hydration energy or the solvation energy, solvation in water, and that is equal to negative 619 kilojoules per mole. Seven minutes. Okay. So now, in order to calculate the enthalpy of solution, that's equal to the lattice energy, 632 kilojoules per mole. I did not make a mistake here. I changed the sign because I am breaking this lattice apart, not forming it. Plus a negative 619 kilojoules per mole. So that's equal to 13 kilojoules per mole. If I have 13 kilojoules per mole, how will that feel? Hot or cold? It'll feel cold. Will this be so cold that it causes pain to me with 13 kilojoules? No, it'll be cool, right? It's not that much energy. 